Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, I want to do a really fun discussion video talking about Link 2s in Yu-Gi-Oh! In fact, underappreciated or kind of under-the-radar Link 2s. These are Link 2s that have really never had a heyday in Yu-Gi-Oh! But I really do think they are cards that, like, whether it's five years from now or three months from now, when we get cards revealed for, like, Legacy of Destruction... I think these cards could come back into the game as like legit, really powerful cards that really do come up in meta, meta strategies. Um, so it's totally under the radar to me. The fifth one's kind of fringe, but stick with me and then we'll slowly climb up to the top one and go over them one by one. But I've got five different underrated Link 2s. Feel free to let me know if you think there are any cards that got missed on this list that could have easily made it on. This is just my personal list, but let's get into this thing. First and foremost, Subterra Behemoth Fiendus. Now this one's pie for a reason because I think it's the most fringe, but I really do think if you just read through this card, you actually just find yourself going like, huh, that's actually not a bad card. Okay, so Subterra Behemoth Fiendus, it's a Subterra card, but it never saw play because Subterras have never spanned the board enough. Uh, nearly quick enough for you to ever be able to make this card. But I think when you read through this card, you're actually like, huh. Weird, and it's actually sort of like a generic flip deck support card. So it takes two flip monsters. That's one of the downsides of the de of the card, that generally a lot of flip monsters want to be set. So you're not even doing this turn one. But I do think if Konami ever is giving like future flip deck support, the whole thing they need to do is like speed them up, make it so they can flip up turn one, so they do end up with face up flip monsters turn one more consistently. Um, plus, just because a monster has a flip effect doesn't mean it has any. It doesn't have other effects. It could have other effects. It could have. We could have an archetype where they're flip monsters, but they also just jump on the field and spam the board, and boom, this card's way easier to make at that point. So anyway, this card gains the attack of the uh, uh, the levels of the subterra monsters used for its summon times 100. That's not that crazy. I mean, yes, if subterra is the archetype this this is being played in, that's nice because it's already 2,000, so it does get pretty big. Here's the bigger thing. You can send a flip monster from your deck to the graveyard. And if you do, special summon mon uh, one monster from your hand in face down defense position to a zone this card points to. So this is foolish burial any flip monster in the game to pull a monster, at, literally any monster out of the hand. It just has to go face down. That's already an incredibly powerful effect because it's flipped generically, which means stuff like Shadals get to be sent. This is by effect, by the way, not as cost. So you can send a Shadal to then summon a monster from hand face down. That's legit a, a good extension effect. And the other effect is once per turn, if a monster this card points to is flipped face up, you can add any flip monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. That is not restricted. None of the none of those other two effects are sub terror based at all. That is any flip in the entire game you get to add to hand. So if it's something like a Shadal and you have access to a way to fuse, boom, you're just getting another free card to hand if you were able to flip something up under this card. So I think this card is like a legitimately solid card. It's just never had a home to be in. I made a video talking about sub terrors and people shat on this card so hard and I had to be like, no, you guys don't see it. It's just that they, this deck hasn't had a home. It is a legitimately good card. It just hasn't had a home to live in yet. And if something like Sub Terror or whether it's, I guess it could be ninjas, but I don't think their monsters are technically flip monsters normally. Maybe it's Shadal support down the line. Whatever it ends up being, eventually Konami is going to come through and make flip support fast enough to be able to use a card like this. And I think it'll come up. All right. Number two, spent a lot of time on that one. Alistair, the Invoker of Madness. This card's really cool. It's never really seen too much play. Uh, even when like the Shadal stuff first came out back in the day and like people would have thought about this card. This card felt like more of a win more card, but I actually think it's pretty interesting. Um, so if you don't know what this card does, it counts as Alistair on the field um, or in the grave. And if a monster is fusion summoned while it's on the field, you can discard a card and either add an invocation or a book of law. Book of law I'm not too worried about, but invocation is a lot more interesting to me. Um, and then also if this face of card leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can add no Mega Summon. You're probably not ever playing a Mega Summon in a deck. That card is terrible. But adding Invocation is really, really clean because um, what this means is that, yes, in Invoked, this is cool. And that's totally something that I think is, is you don't want to ignore with this card because I think we, we could get Magistus support in the next year or two because it's in the new OCG Stories timeline. So now we'll see if they end up getting connected that way. 
Um, so they could be getting better in that avenue. But the other thing is like generically in a fusion deck, this card could actually be interesting because you could just play one invocation in the main deck. And if you can generically make this card, then make a fusion under it, this card searches you invocation and now you can just fuse again. You just got a free poly. And this card counts as Alistair on field or in grave. So if you get this card then sent to grave or whatever, you then get to make like a free Macaba or a free whichever of the other invoked um, maybe Caliga, right? Uh, any of the other invoked boss monsters, like on top of whatever you're doing. Now, again, better than invoca invoked itself. If they get the right extending tools support wise, maybe they're able to just do two fusions a turn con somewhat consistently. And that just raises the ceiling of invoked because that's always been, that's kind of the power creep of invoked at this point is like, yes, it's a one, it's like a zero card decent interruption but it's just low ceiling but this could potentially raise the ceiling of that of that so that would be really really cool to see all right moving on bujinki ahashima now i know this card saw just like a, a quick little bit of play in sprite uh with when we got ronin toad in ban because you would just use like swap frog to send a second swap then you'd like return the first swap to hand and then you'd summon this to summon both and then you could just that would give you two aquas to go ahead and make totally awesome like in a roundabout way but doing you doing that with this card it felt like you had to go super neg to do that and you didn't and even end on like that good of a board so i never liked that too much um i think that's totally like I, I i thought that was like a bad version of the deck even though it saw like a quick week or two of play before people realized it wasn't the best way to play the deck so i'm not going to count it here but i do think there's a card that i look at and i just go man xz decks like 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 this is a cool card that i do think like if the right type of Exceed deck comes around, this card becomes like really, really interesting um, for sure because it's just like a pretty good extender. If a deck already does like a certain type of combo to end with like just the right levels in hand and in grave naturally, this card becomes like a really cool extending tool. Plus, of course, the utility to just get an extra back row pop either on your turn or your opponents if you're quick detaching. I think there's definitely something there. It's it's not the most insane card, but I do think it's a card that could just come up with just like random combo lines for like specific Xeed based decks. So I think it's cool. I like it, but uh, you know, it's definitely not the most powerful one on this list for sure. All right, number two, some summer summoner. Um, here's the thing. This card, I as soon as it got printed, I thought was a good card. It even got printed when like Thunder Dragon was still like sort of interesting, but um, it hasn't really come to fruition. And part of that is because Thunder is a pretty underwhelming, under supported type in the game. But if Konami really pushes forward and like really makes this concentrated effort to like really make Thunder support like significantly better. Uh, or like just just one good thunder deck this card could be good and maybe it maybe it is still just thunder dragon we just need to wait and see but this card's really just <laughs> a good card it's a quick effect reborn uh of any thunder monster in grave except a link that's it uh, that's like pretty good so all we need is an archetype that actually just like gets you value by reborning a thunder i mean that even in thunder dragon it's like oh if your colossus gets outed this card now could just reborn Colossus at any time, or Titan, as long as they were correctly summoned in the first place. So uh, that's cool. I don't know if it'll be that archetype. I don't know if it'll be a different Thunder archetype that gets you know made up down the line. But I do think it's just straight up a good card. I wish, yeah, like obviously, it'd be even more insane if you could do it during or either player's turn. But even just doing it on your opponent's turn still gives this card uh, enough legs to me to come up in the future for sure. And number one on the list, it's Lib. Uh, this card gets such little recognition. The only time this card has ever seen play is like in a higher level rogue deck in Mech Knights, and that's basically it. Uh, by the time Lib got or Ib got banned, this card I don't even think was printed yet, or if it was, there wasn't much crossover. I think this card is insanely strong, just in a vacuum. So if you don't know how this card works specifically, it cannot be link summoned unless you already have a World Legacy card in your grave. That's the first restriction on this card it's probably the biggest restriction why this card has never really seen that much play because it's it's very restricted to like the world legacy lore and stuff but its two effects are both really really powerful so the first one says during the main phase you can just set any world legacy spell or trap directly from the deck but it cannot be activated this turn while you have no world legacy monsters engraved but basically if you're putting a world legacy engraved you probably have a way to get a monster so 
if it's if you're going for a regular spell, you should be able to activate it most times. Um, and the second effect, if this link summoned card is sent to the graveyard as link material, non-targeting, shuffle a card on the field into the deck. Immensely powerful, especially since we now have IP Mascarena, also one of the World Legacy traps you can set, lets you quick link on the opponent's turn. So you quick link with this into maybe an IP Mascarena, or not an IP, I'm sorry, uh, SP. SP Little Knight banishes a monster, a monster, or a card, then Lib shuffles a card, in which is chain blocking and then you also have sp's other interruptions so like this card just summoning this card with any other monster on field already gives you like three pretty decent interruptions uh which is pretty strong so um you know plus it's well, it's not out of the question konami comes up with more war legacy stuff i think ib coming off the ban list makes this way more interesting because that's a generic um level five synchro that just like if a deck can make a level five synchro that basically turns this card on because ib on summon gets you a world legacy card so that pretty much basically already gets you um the, the requirements to like summon lib basically and then you just do lib stuff uh which is pretty strong so uh, if there's a way to actually like connect that stuff and i think it could with all the cards we've gotten since uh, ib got banned i wouldn't be surprised if we see a deck where like lib actually comes up Plus it sets from deck, so it plays around like Droll and stuff, which is also pretty significant. I think it's a legit card that even right now maybe could come up in like a decent rogue deck. I'd add it'd be like tier one, but like a decent respectable rogue deck that's kind of scary. And then maybe down the line, if like they ever gave Mech Knight support, Crusadia support, Orcist maybe, maybe there's a world where they jump back in and this card becomes like a legit scary threat again in a good deck. So... We'll see, but these are the five Link 2s that I think have never really had like quite as good a time in the sun, but I do think are like legitimately scary for different reasons, should the right stuff surround them, whether it's the right new deck, maybe it's support for an older deck that, that they need. Um, but I'd be really, really curious to see where and when these, these cards will definitely come up in the metagame down the line. But that's it for me. You know, those are my five cards. Like I said at the beginning of the video, let me know what Link 2 you think might have missed this list that maybe should have been on it. I'd love to hear that down below. But I'm out of here. Keeping you up to date on anything news-wise and then maybe a, a discussion video here or there when I'm feeling it. Um, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.